What Power Query is used for is pulling data in from a wide variety of data sources and including them in our Excel-based BI solutions. In this lesson, I just want to show you how to use Power Query to bring data in directly from the Hadoop file system, or HDFS, which is something that no other piece of Excel and the Microsoft BI stack will really let you do in Excel, so it's something that's a little unique and new, so I just wanted to show you how it worked. Using Power Query is somewhat similar to using the Data tab, where we might say data from other sources and we get this list, which is a pretty good list of, of possible data sources we have just within Excel. The other way we can import data is directly from the Power Pivot add-in. And here again we have from other data sources and we can choose still other data sources. Then Power Query gives us yet another import from data sources. It may seem a little confusing that we can pull data into our BI solution in so many different ways and granted it probably is. But if you study each of these import menus separately, you'll see that they have some different capabilities, a few overlapping capabilities, but a lot of different ones. Power Query really embraces many of the unstructured and social media sources that uh, perhaps we can't do with, uh, with the other options. So it does have some interesting features. One of those is input from HDFS, which I'm going to use in a moment. So before I bring in my Hadoop data, I'm just going to show you how to use Power Query to bring in data sources you're probably very familiar with, like Excel. So if I wanted to bring in a couple of Excel files, I have uh, a couple of workbooks. One of them has information about uh, airline carriers. So this would be Delta United Airlines and so on. So I'm going to grab that Excel spreadsheet and bring that in as a table. And you see this interface is a little bit different than perhaps what you've seen in other import dialogues within the Excel framework. And for these Excel sheets, things are pretty well carried out. So the only thing I'm going to do is use this little option that says use first rows headers and that will give me a nice clean file. And this file is very clean. I really don't need to do anything with it. So I'll just pull it in. When I import some of the other data, there's actually some manipulation that I'll do and I'll, I'll show you when I get there. If I want to add that to my Power Pivot data model, there's a little link on here, load to data model. So I'll click on that. And that will transfer that reference from just the Power Query environment into Power Pivot. So now if I return to the Power Pivot window, I have my table of airline carriers. So I'm going to give that a name within Power Pivot here. And I'll go back to Excel. And I'm going to repeat that one more time for the other Excel spreadsheet. So I'll say Power Query Import from Excel. And this spreadsheet has some aircraft models. Again, just an Excel import, very simple. And again, my first row as headers. Done key, bring it all in, then load that into the Power Pivot model. And that's checked. If I want to just verify that, I can see that I have the carriers from before. I have the airplane models now. Now I'm going to change up and bring in a couple of tables from my Hadoop cluster. So if I click from other sources and click on HDFS, I'm going to put in the name of the name node of my Hadoop cluster here. The dialog now pops up and shows me all of the files I have within my Hadoop cluster. So this is a little bit different than if we were using something like Hive, where the structure of all these files would have already been defined and they'd be combined and given names and so on. Here we're actually looking at the actual files within the system. One of the tables I want to bring in is the aircraft registration table. This is essentially a dimension within the data that I've dumped into Hadoop. And this data originally came from a data warehouse and I just dumped it out into comma separated values files and threw it into HDFS knowing that I could use different tools to pull out and analyze it from there. I want to bring in this entire file so I'm just going to click on that little link there that says binary. I can preview what it looks like. That looks fine. Again, I can see that the CSV file has some headers in it. So I'll tell it I want to use that first row. And what's really cool about doing this is, you know, I didn't have to create a hive structure over this. I didn't have to extract the state or do anything fancy. I can just right within Excel go out and grab files. Over here in the right, I can see it's importing rows. It's giving me an idea of how much RAM that's taking to uh, pull in and store. And once that's done, again, I can see it's all downloaded. It's turned it into a table within the Excel sheet. And I just want to go directly to loading that to the data model. 
And just to verify that that happened, I can see that there's those 367,000 aircraft. These are the end numbers, the tail numbers of each aircraft, and it has various kinds of information about each airplane. I'm going to rename that to call that just my aircraft table. Then I'll return to Excel. And the last thing I'm going to do is go and bring in one last table. This is going to be some fact data about the flights that occurred with those airplanes. That is also in HDFS. I'm going to grab just one month out of the year 1988 and take a look at that. So I click on that binary link that will give me the file. Again, the first row is the headers. And I don't actually want this entire file because this file is six months of data. I only want the first month. So I'm going to filter this by applying a text filter so that the date key begins with 1988 01. That will give me all the records from January of that year. Click OK. And the screen doesn't really change much because the preview only had the first 100 rows anyway. But with this formula, you can see it gives you a lot of flexibility and power that you don't get when you're just pulling in some data with import data from data source or text file. So when I'm happy with that, I'll click the Done button. That will start the data loading process, just like it did in the previous three trials. This one will load more data, of course. So now that data load is done, and we can see we have this data imported from HDFS in a simple Excel table at this point. And I have a month of data, so it's about 436,000 or so flights that occurred during that uh, one month of 1988. And again, I want to load this into my data model, so I'll click the Load a Data Model. That will connect that up with Power Pivot so that I can use Power Pivot for the analytical part of my analysis. And now with that loaded to the data model, I'm going to go and look and see what my final set of tables looks like. So I have carriers from Excel, aircraft model from Excel, aircraft is from Hadoop, and these are the flights also from Hadoop. So I'll give that the name flight data. And then I'd like to connect these tables together, so I'll do that from the diagram view. You can do it from the spreadsheet view if you like. I just prefer to use the diagram. So in the middle of my kind of star schema that I'm building, I have my flight data, aircraft, aircraft model, and then carriers. So all I need to do in Power Pivot is just drag these keys from the fact table to the dimensions. And now with my relationships in place, the last thing I'm going to do is a little bit of manipulation on the data model. So the measure I'm going to create for the purposes of this video is just looking at the flight distance in miles. So how long are these flights going? And then being able to roll that up and analyze it by, say, carrier or aircraft model and so on. So to analyze this, I notice this is a data type as text, and I can't really run an average of text. So I'm going to make this a whole number, which is what it is. Then I'll put my cursor under that column and use the little auto sum shortcut to create the average number that I'm looking for. And I don't really like the title that Power Pivot assigned for me, so I'm going to put something in here that's shorter. I'm going to call it average flight miles instead. And finally, with this measure, I'm going to adjust the number of decimals that it displays by default. I'll just make that a number with one decimal point, and I would like the thousands separator. And with that, I will go ahead and analyze my data. So I'm going to create a just a pivot table first to show how we can slice this data. I'll put it in a new worksheet. The data I'm interested in is this flight data. At the bottom, I should see the measure I created, which is average flight miles. And that tells me I have 594 and a half miles per flight on average. And while Power Query is still in preview and will perhaps work a little bit differently and have more bells and whistles when it's completed, at least we can see the direction that Microsoft is going with enabling us to use Excel and Hadoop seamlessly together.